I am going to talk about expected window min payoff. This is a joint work with Benjamin Borde and uh, Jean Francois Raska. So, uh, I start with the notion of classical min payoff. So, essentially, given a sequence of infinite sequence of uh, values, we define the min payoff over this infinite sequence as limit over some uh, n, a sequence of n uh, values, and when n tends to infinity. And uh, so, the problem that min payoff suffers from is that min payoff does not guarantee local stability. So, for example, the, if the min payoff value is something like lambda, then it is possible that for arbitrary uh, long infixes, uh, the value is actually far away from this min payoff lambda. Okay? So, that is why we have this uh, notion of window min payoff, which is a more stronger uh, notion than classical min payoff, where we kind of consider a uh, a window which is sliding over this infinite sequence. And what we want is that for each of these local window which is sliding along this infinite sequence, we want this uh, particular threshold to be satisfied. So, you have this infinite sequence and we have a particular window which is sliding and for each of these sliding windows, uh, we want that threshold value is satisfied. So, it is kind of a strengthening of the classical min payoff objective in the sense that if the window min payoff objective is satisfied, so if for every such sliding window the value is greater than or equal to some lambda, then it implies that the value of the min payoff, the classical min payoff is also greater than or equal to lambda. To give you an example, so the good window property is essentially what I mentioned that like, uh, so for every uh, window of length L, we want that this particular threshold lambda is reached. So, here is some sequence of value, sequence of some weights and the way we define our window mean payoff given this window length L is that, uh, so for some uh, length k which is less than equal to L, uh, this we want to achieve the particular value of lambda. So, for example, here L equals 3, we are looking at windows of length either 1, 2 or 3 and looking at at each position, what is the maximum that we can achieve? So, for example, at the starting position, like if I look at just window of length 1, it is 3. For 2 again, it is 3 because 3 plus 3 over 2 gives 3. And then if I look at window of length 3, which is given by this L here, then I give, get the maximum value which is 11 over 3. If I look at the second position, then I get this value of 4 but with, with a value with some k, which is only 2 like so I am looking for uh, window lens which is like either 1, 2 or at max it can be this value this is L. So, this is the so this is the definition of our window uh, mean payoff. So, essentially given this L I want to achieve this particular value of lambda within L steps not exactly at L steps, but within L steps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, for example, you can consider that like, uh, I mean a practical example may be that you have a bank account and then, uh, well, you it, there may be a requirement that within the bank, ac I, I mean your account balance should not go below certain amount for some amount of time. So, it is not for an arbitrary period of time and then you get some high value, but within like every year you have to uh, like uh, within certain window, you need to maintain this particular balance. So, we are looking at different varieties of this uh, window mean payoff function. So, given a particular infinite sequence, we first look at the fixed window mean payoff function. So, which means that I am given this uh, window length L and I compute uh, what, what is the particular value uh, that I obtain for this for this sequence of payoffs. So, I have to essentially ensure that I get this value for at every position and in the fixed window mean payoff, it is a prefix independent property which means that beyond a particular position k, I should be able to uh, see this value uh, for every position beyond this, this position k. Okay? Uh, the bounded window mean payoff is it is again a prefix independent version where the length L is not given, but we say that okay, like whether there exists a window length L such that I can ensure a value of lambda. 
okay so the window length l is not specified but we are asking about whether there exists a window length l so that uh, we can we can ensure a value of lambda and we look at also direct window objectives which are not prefix independent uh, but you have to ensure the value of uh, the, the window mean payoff starting from the beginning of the sequence so similarly so similar to the fixed window mean payoff we have direct fixed window mean payoff and we also have direct bounded window mean payoff objective so some properties we can see immediately is that if l increases then the window mean payoff that we can ensure it it is like so for if i have like a window mean payoff of l plus 1 that is greater than equal to uh, what i can ensure with a uh, with a value of l because as i was saying that uh, I want to talk about this particular lambda, I want to see within L step. So if I increase my L, then what I can ensure is it becomes at least uh, the value that I had with a, for a small, smaller value of L. And uh, the value that I have for the bounded window mean payoff, like I ask whether there exists a value of L. So this is essentially a supremum of these different values of L and this is over which I can compute the fixed window mean payoff. Okay, so we are going to study these functions over Markov decision processes. So what is a Markov decision process? It's defined by a tuple where S is a set of states, E is a set of edges, ACT is like the set of actions. So here for example in this diagram the actions are like this, either this uh, brown action or a blue action, the green action. So this is how I, uh, this, these are my actions and S in it is like an initial state in this particular example it is S0 and W is like it's a function uh, which assigns weight to the edges and P is a probability distribution so it maps a particular state and an action to the outgoing edges so for example if I say I choose the uh, action brown from S0 it assigns probability 0.5 to this edge and probability 0.5 to this edge okay and uh, what is an end component? An end component is a sub MDP. It's essentially this itself is an MDP and that is strongly connected. So that is an end component. And the maximal end component is one which is not included in any other end component. And uh, so this is something which is well known that every infinite path in an MDP almost surely, so as Akshay described in, uh, in the previous talk, like so with probability 1 almost surely means that with probability 1 if you consider any infinite path in an arbitrary MDP which does not necessarily be uh, which is not necessarily an, uh, 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 an end component an infinite path with probability 1 will end up in one of the end components. So that is uh, so this is something uh, we will use later and we are also going to talk about strategies in an MDP. So what is a strategy? So essentially a strategy can be considered as like given a sequence of uh, states, so which is a history, uh, we assign a distribution uh, over the set of actions such that uh, the support of this distribution is essentially a subset of the set of actions that are available at the last state. So for example, if I see a sequence of states which ends at say S1, then uh, a, a particular strategy will be say choose uh, this action with probability 0.4 and this one with probability 0.6 okay so it's like a distribution over the set of actions that are available at the last state of this sequence okay uh, a strategy is said to be de uh, deterministic if I choose one fixed action like so if I see uh, if I have a sequence of states and like I choose one particular uh, action from the which is available uh, fr from the set of actions that are available at the last state. Okay, so this is like a deterministic action, and a memoryless deterministic strategy is one in which uh, I just need to look at the last state. So I don't need to look at the whole history. And uh, similarly, we can also talk about finite memory strategies. We are going to use them here. So in a finite memory strategy, we can like the strategy uses only a finite length history okay so that is a finite memory strategy okay so uh, so there is one property uh, that we will again be using which is that inside an MEC if you consider any arbitrary state okay inside a, a maximal end component there exists a deterministic memoryless strategy 
okay uh, there exists a deterministic memoryless strategy to reach another state of the mec almost surely for example from here you can reach any of the other state let's say here you can reach from s0 to s6 by a deterministic memoryless strategy okay so if you are in an inside end com inside and maximal end component you can reach another state of the maximal end component by a deterministic memoryless strategy okay so now uh, the markov chain is essentially what uh, in the previous talk akshay mentioned as uh, the level labeled markov chain here so uh, the idea is that in an mdp if i if i fix my strategy then what we obtain is a is a markov chain so for example here i uh, choose the brown action and then here i uh, again like from s1 i choose the brown and from here the blue one like this and then so if you see that when i come from s5 i have another state which is actually this s1 but in some sense it stores where i am coming from so it kind of stores like keeps track of the memory so it is so i call it s1 prime and it says that okay if i have come from s5 then instead of taking this brown action i will be choosing the green action and i will go to s6 okay so uh, so the state space of the markov chain essentially it kind of kind of also stores uh, stores the strategy the, the memory of the strategy so in a markov chain what happens is like uh, we have uh, a bottom strongly connected component which is like a strongly connected component from which there is no way to escape and a path in a markov chain reaches a bottom strongly connected component almost surely okay so now uh, i'm going to define what i mean by uh, the op uh, optimal expected value in the mdp it's essentially so once i choose a strategy i have a markov chain i have an expected value corresponding to this strategy the optimal expected value is like for for a given function uh, the, the 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 value that i get corresponding to the strategy which maximizes the expected value okay so it's like the supremum over all these strategies the expected value that i get i call this the optimal expected value and the corresponding strategy i call it an expectation optimal strategy okay so this is so far uh, like uh, and and an mdp uh, can also be considered as a weighted two player game where we just kind of uh, forget the probabilities and player 1 essentially chooses an action and player 2 can choose given this particular action what is the next state so again it's similar to the two player games that we saw uh, in 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 the morning today but the representation is a bit bit different so uh, okay so with uh, with the definitions i'm going to now introduce the problem that we study here so we have looked at all these uh, different objectives like the fixed window mean payoff bounded window mean payoff and their direct variance and what we want to study is uh, compute the optimal expected value for this Uh, window functions uh, given an mdp okay and this problems i mean they have been studied in the context of two player games uh, by chatterjee et al earlier and uh, so we start with the fixed window mean payoff function so the idea is that given uh, a, an mdp and the length and the window length l uh, we want to compute the optimal expected value for the fixed window mean payoff function for 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 this mdp so uh, we assume that l is bounded polynomial polynomially by the size of the mdp essentially it gives some notion of stability within a reasonable period of time so we don't want the window length to be too large okay and uh, this is a prefix independent objective uh, if if okay so now uh, here is an example so consider that the window length is 3 and if i start from s0 and suppose if i play blue okay if i play the blue action then what can happen is that infinitely often i can see uh, this sequence of edges from s0 okay and hence my window mean payoff my fixed window mean payoff which is actually a prefix independent function it will give me a value of 0 because infinitely often i am going to see sequences of values which are of which are of length l and their average is zero okay whereas from s2 again it is zero if blue is played in uh, zero right i mean you can see exactly the same sequence here 
it's like uh, and and this gives a window mean payoff of zero. Whereas if in S zero uh, the brown action is played, then what can happen is like okay, uh, I choose this one and then I see this, and then starting from S two I can see a value of uh, two over three. Okay. So now uh, similarly I can see that for state S one uh, I have a value which is like three plus six over two. From S4, I can see something like 0, 1, 2 for given uh, given a window uh, 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 given a window of length 3. I can see this sequence, which is 0, 1, and 5, which make, which gives me a value of 2 from S4. From S5 also, I get a value of 2. And uh, from S6, note that like uh, I will choose this one, but not this edge, but I will choose this edge. So you. So what we note here is that uh, the strategy that will be played from uh, fr from the states of the MDP, it's not necessarily going to be a memoryless strategy, because when I'm coming from S5, I'm going to take this action so that the value from S4 that I see is kind of I, I get a value of two, whereas from here I'm going to take this edge, which will give me a value of minus two plus three plus six over three. Okay, so this gives me like uh, uh, this value. So, so the point to uh, note here is that that in this kind of objective, uh, we essentially need uh, memory. Okay, and uh, so uh, as this is a prefix independent objective, and every path, every path, almost surely, that is with probability one, is going to end up. Uh, in an MEC, maximal end component, we are going to restrict our attention first only in the MECs of the MDP. So let's just consider an MEC, a single MEC, and see how uh, the behavior is within the MEC. Okay? So uh, essentially within the MEC, uh, so if I choose a particular strategy, so, so there is an MEC M, and I have a particular strategy which gives me a mark of chain, and so, so a path in this Markov chain, it visits every finite sequence of states of length L almost surely infinitely often. Okay? Uh, so you have the Markov chain, and in the Markov chain, there are these bottom strongly connected component, and in the bottom strongly connected component, almost surely, infinitely often, every path of length L is going to be visited infinitely often. Okay? In particular, the worst sequence of such uh, states Okay, the worst sequence of such states is going to be visited infinitely often. So this kind of gives us the value, the worst sequence of, of such, uh, of the states or of the values. So in some sense, it can be, so you have, so there is a strategy that has been chosen and we get a Markov chain and we get to see the worst sequence of, uh, sequence of values infinitely often. So this has some kind of flavor of a two-player game. Okay, so the, so the adversary, so the adversary is going to choose this uh, worst sequence of, of, of weights. And uh, so the idea is that given an MDP, for each state in the MDP, we solve the two-player game. We solve the two-player uh, fixed window mean payoff game. And uh, then we kind of choose the state for which we get the best value. And within the uh, MEC, within the end component, we have a strategy to reach that vertex almost surely, right? So as I said earlier, that within an end component, given a particular vertex, you can always reach almost surely any other vertex, right? So the best vertex that I have, I can, I try to reach there uh, and play, play essentially from there. So that is the idea. So for example, here, if I try to play, for example, the, the brown uh, action, I have a value of one. But here, I could, I, we saw that we have a value of two. So the idea is that like we solve the two player game in each of the vertices in the maximal end component and then we play the action so that we almost surely reach here and then we follow the strategy here. Okay? So this is the idea inside the end component. And then the remaining part is like how do we reach in some sense the best end components. Okay. So suppose if I have like, so you ha I have this end component, this may be a full arbitrary MDP. I have the end components. I kind of get the values for each of these end components. And then whatever is the value that I obtain, like the best 
like I, I had the best value for this vertex, so I would call this say lambda m1 and for this similarly if I have lambda m2 and then I kind of compact each of these MDPs, uh, MECs into a single vertex with a self loop uh, with these weights and then we get a new MDP, right? And then the problem kind of boils down to finding uh, like the expected classical mean payoff in this, in this reduced MDP, okay? So this is uh, the idea and we also have a relative hardness result which says that the problem is at least as hard as solving the two player fixed window mean payoff game. Okay, so this is the relative hardness result and uh, okay, so I'll just, uh, so this is stated a bit more formally. So uh, then we study the direct fixed window of mean payoff objective and we show that this problem is much harder. So in the fixed window, direct fixed window objective, we cannot restrict our attention only to the uh, maximal end components because we are looking from the beginning of the path. And uh, what we show that this problem is much harder and uh, this is in fact, P space hard, okay? So deciding that whether uh, the direct fixed window objective is above a particular threshold, this problem uh, is, is P space hard and uh, we do a reduction from the threshold probability problem uh, for stochastic shortest path, okay? So I will uh, skip the reduction here, uh, okay? Uh, and for solving the problem, so essentially for, for the membership, uh, what we do is the following, that we construct a new MDP which kind of maps each infinite path that keeps track of uh, the minimal mean payoff that, that is encountered over the window of length L. So I, we have the original MDP and we have the paths in the original MDP. We construct a new MDP which keeps track of what is the minimum window mean payoff that I have seen so far and this uh, new MDP is exponential in the window length L. And uh, yeah, and this problem can be solved in exponential time, exponential in the window length L with exponential memory strategy. So we talked about finite memory strategies and here the memory requirement is like exponential memory is required. So here is uh, a summary of the results that we have. So we also solve the, I didn't talk about the bounded window mean payoff. Essentially, the bounded window mean payoff, instead of solving the two-player uh, two player window mean payoff game, it requires us to solve the two-player classical uh, mean payoff game, which gives us this UP intersection co-UP complexity. And similarly, we also have a relative hardness result. So we can show that solving the bounded window mean payoff problem is no easier than uh, solving the classical uh, mean payoff problem. Okay, classical two-player mean payoff problem. And uh, we can also show that when it comes to direct bounded uh, window mean payoff, it's exactly the same as uh, like over a sequence of weights over a path, the uh, value of the direct bounded wi window mean payoff is the same as the value of the bounded window mean payoff. And we also solve the problems for the special case of Markov chains. Uh, we can show that for the bounded window mean payoff, it's uh, polynomial. And for the direct window mean payoff, it's no longer exponential, but it's pseudo polynomial in the weights that appear in the Markov chain. So uh, one problem in this uh, definition is that, like when we enter the, uh, when we enter the, or one limitation is that when we enter the end components, then the probabilities somehow are not so uh, important. So it's kind of independent, the value that we get, we are playing a two player game and the value that we get is independent of the probabilities. So there can be other definitions, other notions of window mean payoff as well, in which the probabilities inside the uh, maximal end components also play a significant role. So uh, we have some definitions and we have some initial results. So this is the thing that we have been working on now. Uh, so yeah, so I think I will stop here. Uh, okay, thank you. So something you might ask about is like, what if you only want a one minus special or one fraction of your windows to satisfy this threshold thing? Uh, so you are saying that one minus delta fractions of this window satisfying? Well, we've got to go to zero as n guesses. 
So, so what we are doing here is like, so if I look at the fixed window mean payoff, so essentially it's like within certain, within our, so first of all it's a prefix independent objective, so we can restrict our attention to the end components, okay. So some of the end components are good and some of the end components are not good. And so whether it is good or not, it depends on like what we, uh, what we observe by playing a two player game inside the maximal end, inside rather each vertex of the maximal end component. And if there is one vertex which turns out to be good, then you can reach that particular vertex from any other vertex by, by, by a deterministic memoryless strategy, sort of almost it surely. Happen, happen with positive probability anyway, so positive frequency as well, okay. Yeah, it will, it will happen, like it will, uh, essentially we see that, but the probabilities do not really play a role uh, because, yeah, even if there is a non-zero probability like really low, you are going to see that kind of sequence infinitely often because you are in a strongly connected component. Is it true that if you say it infinitely often, then in fact you say it with, you know, in a positive time, I guess the probability? Yeah, like, uh, yeah, with probability one, uh, you are going to. Okay, so I have a question also. So it's very interesting that you use the two player case uh, to solve the MD clean phase. So could you push that a little bit further by sending a two and a half player case, for So one intention uh, would be like to instead of considering the MDP, uh, rather like can you consider window min payoff over st for stochastic games, okay? So this is perfectly a valid problem, I think, but uh, we haven't really, uh, we are not, re we haven't really started working on that. but. But, uh, but related to that, as I was going to say that uh, a future work is essentially coming up with some definitions of window mean payoff, uh, which are there in some of the uh, appendix slides, that we have some definitions of uh, different kinds of window mean payoff, where we cannot any longer have a two-player game inside the maximal end components. So what about combining the window payoff with some kind of some kind of combination of the payoff in the worst case to measure that. Yeah. So you are talking about like multiple objectives. So you are talking about multiple objectives or like, or you can say that, well, uh, with probability something I want a window mean payoff and then uh, I also want something else in the worst case. Yeah, so this kind of, I think, uh, objectives in conjunction can be studied as well, yes, but uh, yeah, this is not. Thank you.